I'm Chris Fletch. I'm going to host today's meeting. Uh, it's great to see some of you returning and some new people joining us uh, today for Chamber Live. The idea behind this is literally to, to go through and identify a couple of key things that the Chamber of Commerce is doing at the present moment in time. Uh, we're going to be focusing just on a couple of things today, the way that people have changed, some of the way that they work, some of the services that we've begun to offer as part of that. We've also got uh, as well a piece uh, coming up around what impact Brexit is having on some of the businesses and how we're tackling some of those queries uh, that are coming in as well. Um, the session will be recorded, so we are recording it. We usually put that out as in the form of a podcast and also on our YouTube channel in the next 24 to 48 hours. So if there's something from today's uh, event you want to watch again or, or listen to again, uh, please use that and look out for that uh, in the future. Also, again, like I said, just please uh, mute uh, all your microphones. Uh, then we don't get any uh, odd noises or Amazon deliveries or something like that interrupting the uh, the flow of the event or the speakers. If you do have a question, I'm really looking for, for a good bit of uh, uh, participation today uh, of the next half hour or so. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, if you do want to take part in the conversation, chat or ask any questions or introduce yourself to people, please use the chat facility, uh, the chat box uh, on the screen. Uh, if you've got a question, we'll get round to it and we'll ask that um, and hopefully answer it, which would be even better, wouldn't it? Uh, it's one thing to ask questions. It's even better when you get an answer to them. Uh, so we'll try our best uh, to answer any questions uh, that you do get. Um, so um, anyway, since the start of the pandemic, and it, it, it seems an awful long time ago, doesn't it? It's going to be 12 months next month uh, since the first lockdown. And, and in one part, I think the time's absolutely dragged but on a, in another way it seems to have just gone like that really really quickly uh depending on uh, on your own personal experiences obviously but certainly since uh, since the pandemic started and since lockdown started how people have worked has, has changed for, for pretty much everyone uh we've seen greater digitalization of services we've seen more uh, remote working working from home learning from home uh, and innovation and resilience really has been key uh, for most businesses including adoption as well of new working methods uh, for a lot of businesses. And that's no different, really, uh, from us here at, at, at the Chamber of Commerce either. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'd like to introduce Diane Elbert Morgan from our, our membership team to, to discuss this a little bit further. Uh, so good morning, Di. Morning, Chris. Excellent. Morning, everyone. Good to see you. Um, I know, obviously, you're, 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 you play a key part in, in the membership team, and we've heard from a lot of businesses right across Greater Manchester. Some have had their struggles, haven't they, over of, of the last 10 months or so. Uh, but we've also seen some positive changes as well, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. And I think it, it's been a struggle for most businesses. There's probably a couple of sectors that have done really well from it, but I think for everybody it's been a, a difficult time. And certainly for our chamber members and the people we've engaged with, it's been difficult. But concentrating on the positive changes, there's more flexible ways of working. I think everybody's had to adjust to that. Uh, there's innovative services that have been launched. You know, we've done that as well. And this will change the way we all work when we get back to the normal or normality. So I think these are things that will carry forward and will probably be really good and really positive things as well. As you said, the main themes are around digitising, also accessibility. You've got your great examples like Amazon, Uber, Airbnb, who were already pretty much, you know, ahead of the game with this stuff. But again, they've had to, you know, diversify as well. So that's been good to see. Um, I guess we all want things at our fingertips now, don't we? You want everything at the touch of a button. We want everything quicker and you know and faster these days I'm I'm really impatient I suppose everybody's the same you press a button and if it doesn't happen in two seconds it's like, what's wrong you know yeah. so that's that's my you know we've got to be mindful of that as well and most of our businesses have have changed to accommodate that and we've had to to change as well you know the way we do things we're all working remotely we've had to up our game on customer service and if you look at hospitality you know what they've done they've had to close all the restaurants bars hospitality most of the restaurants now are doing takeaway services doing meal deliveries you know even high end and some of the bars are doing cocktail boxes you know and delivering them as gifts or just weekend treats now so yeah big changes yeah and of course a lot of companies haven't just sort of turned in on themselves and really just focused on on the the support and services they need for themselves We've also had a lot of organisations and, and, and businesses that have given back and provided support, haven't they, to, to the community as well, which which we've also, you know, uh, celebrated in part, really. 
Yeah, they've been absolutely brilliant since right at the beginning of the pandemic. You know, we had people, members, businesses coming forward, um, you know, saying how they could help people and support people, which has been really good. You know, and free support. We have manufacturers. In, you'll probably remember, Chris, in the first, you know, first, second, third weeks, who were coming to us and saying, how can we get to the government? How can we tell them that we're going to diversify and make... We'll do, you know, we'll make PPE, we'll make hand sanitizer, which was brilliant, really, really good. So we were facilitating that as well, weren't we? But it was yeah. good. We yeah. support diversifying some consultative stuff as well. That's been really good. You know, people who would normally charge for their services to help businesses grow have been have been doing that free of charge and probably helped help the businesses through a really difficult time. So it's it's been good to see them helping each other. Um, catering companies as well. That's been really good. They've been feeding people in isolation, sending lovely food. Uh, we've had lots of caterers send in to NHS when when they were obviously working, you know, massive shifts, long hours. That was really good as well. Um, and also the needy. There's been a lot of that. And I think it's it, it's it's good to see. It's good to recognise. It helps the community. It helps them. It's good CSR, but also it's good for the region as well. And I think the British Chambers didn't they did the um, yeah what was it called business it's hero yeah. yeah business yeah. heroes that was really good so a lot of our members got recognised for that which was yeah. really good yeah and I think that spirit has got to carry on isn't it it's it's, it's, it's got yeah. to carry on in some way shape or form and obviously businesses can't keep on you know giving stuff away for free or one thing you know they're recognised as an endpoint in yeah. That. I think I think the spirit and some of the ideas that we've seen, some of the innovation and different ways of working. I think as and when we do come out of uh, lockdown or whatever, some of that will, uh, will will carry on as well. I mentioned at the start that obviously you know we we are a, we are a business as well at, 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 at the chamber, and we've had to uh, also make some changes as well to uh, some of the stuff that we've done, and also look at our services and how we deal with some of these as well during the pandemic. Have you got some examples of that? Uh, yeah, I think probably the biggest changes have been moving the events to online. We did virtually nothing. We didn't do any digital events previously. So we've gone from having over 200 events a year to to doing everything online. So obviously we're not doing the numbers, but we're trying to make accessible networking, uh, knowledge sharing, lots of our partners and support mechanisms. You know, we've, we've been positioning those as well, almost like, round table events online. So we've moved everything onto Zoom, really, and some onto Teams, which has been really good. And also we launched, at the beginning of the pandemic, we launched our GM business community. So for the businesses who were desperately trying to get um, information from the local councils, authorities, grants, all the C-bills, loans, you know, they were coming to us and saying, what do we do? So we wanted to help everybody. We didn't want to say, you know, we don't want to help anybody who's not a member. It wasn't the right thing to do. So we launched the GM business community. People signed up and, um, and we had a, an amazing response and we've had some really good feedback on that as well. So that were big changes for us. And we're in the same position as members. You know, we're, we're a business as well. We've gone remote working. We've had to evolve our services and it's challenging. But like I said, there have been positive outcomes. We've got two brilliant um, services now. We've got my GMCR, which is an app. If you've not got it, we'll put something in the chat, um, which is basically all our members, they can upload information on the business and the services and offer discounts as well. So that's been really popular. You can also upload, if you're a member, you can upload your uh, PR marketing as well online. So that has been a big uptake on that. It's a lot easier to do everything online now. So they've been popular. And whilst we're on the subject of change as well, there is a really good event. I think it's the 18th of Feb at two o'clock GM disruptors that's all about change as well so again we'll post that in the chat jump on there that'll be really good yeah that's great and and again I've, I've just put a question there in the chat really from you know I'd really like to hear from from people on uh, you know on, on here today that uh, perhaps made a temporary change uh, at the start of the pandemic but actually that temporary change is probably going to become permanent and there's another example that we we've got at the chamber where for example we we went uh, we've we've all gone now onto a, a four day week working week. You know, we we we, we dropped a day uh, a week, and we're probably going to continue that in in the future. And there's all sorts of 
benefits. It's obviously taking a bit of time to bed in. <laughs> you, you, you really do have to start to watch uh, your, your, your diaries and things like that. But that was uh, that was done, you know, during the pandemic. But that will continue in the future. So examples are like that. I'm, I'm really interested to uh, to hear about. And obviously, we we, we offer a lot of uh, support and platforms. We mentioned things, for example, like the networking. There's also a, a lot of services to to help businesses to not just scale up, but to to run the businesses better and also connect with other businesses. Yeah, yeah, we've launched quite a lot actually. We we had lots of services before, but we've you know reacted to the pandemic and taken things on board. So if you want internal support, for example, there's HR and legal that's included in chamber membership, and that's provided by our partners Quest. That's a really good service. Always good feedback on that. Really, really good. Um, and if anyone was on last week on the Chamber Live, I think Freets mentioned that they're doing a free legal consultation as well for all businesses, which is amazing. So especially in times like this, you know, businesses are going to need a lot of advice. So it's good that they're offering that. Um, I think if the programs that we're running at the minute are we've got peer networks, which we're running until March. If you've not seen anything about it, again, we'll post in the chat. These are sessions facilitated by Sage Green. Really, really good. It's about peer development, working together, really tackling issues as a group you know, as like a, a task force, really, and that's driving positive change into businesses. Um, the skills for growth, if anybody wants to know about that, businesses get access to a one-to-one with a skills advisor. And again, this is focusing on growth and productivity. We've engaged with around 400 businesses on this. Um, it's really, really good. It's a bespoke plan, you know, for a business and for training the workforce. So again, access to funded training, so if anybody wants to take advantage of that, you don't even have to be a member for that. So that's for members and non-members. Just drop um, a note in the chat and we'll pick that up. And lastly, Kickstart, which is my baby at the minute. I'm sure everybody's heard of it now. We're a gateway for Kickstart, which is a government-funded scheme for getting young people into your business and they pay the wages. The government fund the wages, the national insurance, the um, uh, contributions to pension as well for six months. So, you know, you get that wonderful employing somebody, one, two, three, four places, however many you can take on, six months funded. We provide the wraparound support as well. Um, And it's been brilliant. We've got over 200 placements confirmed now, probably 300 in the pipeline. So, yeah, really positive. So, again, if you want information on that, we'll drop drop a note in. Oh, super. And I certainly know on the Kickstart, that's something you're, well, that's your job, isn't it, really, to to be doing that. And, and you know, I think the the way that that's been handled and delivered and, and the benefits is absolutely super. Because, again, you know, we're dealing there with young people. Uh, and I think when you look ahead and beyond the immediate sort of public health implications of what we're going through at present, we can see there being, you know, a potential really, really big issues coming up around unemployment, furlough ending, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I think if we can begin to really get that motor in now uh, we can offer some of those future problems by taking those steps now and all die and the team are doing an absolutely sterling job on on the kickstart uh, um, uh, scheme there so thanks very much for that Di that's, that's been a great overview and I think setting a really good context as well of, of helping support the outward facing bit but also some of the stuff that we've had to do as well uh, internally and, and again I was having a chat with somebody yesterday you know that I look back now to those sort of early days in March early April of, of the lockdown and sort of um, everyone seemed to be sort of just wondering what on earth was coming next and trying to join the pieces together of one thing or another. I think we're at that point now where the pieces have joined together, but obviously we've still got a lot of things to face going forward. So we'll still be innovating uh, and adopting new things. Just a couple of comments. Uh, I asked before for, for people on on, uh, uh, on today for examples where they've uh, done something temporary. Uh, David Radley is, is uh, adapted quite a few changes um, within the business more efficient and they want to continue uh, with these uh, new ways of working in the future. Uh, Diane, um, you know, delivering professional qualifications, virtual classes, uh, weekends or evenings. Um, and obviously now people, as you said, they can attend a class uh, depending on, you know, what, what suits learners, which I think is is quite important. And we've had a lot of feedback as well from uh, from people joining our events as well to say, you know, these are great because you don't have to get up at, you know, crack a dawn to go on a train to get in the middle of Manchester to do this, this and this. 
I suppose the trick now is making sure that there's going to be that sort of real model going forward of physical and virtual as well. Because uh, I do miss the uh, the chats over a cup of coffee before the event starts. But uh, we will uh, we will get back from that. So they're really good examples. They're they're in the uh, the, the chat box. There are businesses that uh, that have made some changes and looking to continue them. So. Uh, uh, that, that would be absolutely superb. Ray, Ray Muni, Moon has uh, said they've switched to uh, remote auditing, which um, uh, again is something different. It's that remote bit of, you know, you can still do the job. The technology is out there. It's just it's probably never been used before to do it. Now you've got to do it. So you suddenly find out that some of that technology will, will come on in leaps and bounds as well to make things an awful lot easier. So some really good messages uh, in, in the chat box. Thank you very much for that. If there's anything I've missed that you want to let us know, please get in touch uh, after today. Di, thanks very much for that. I'm now going to introduce uh, Lewis Crow, uh, Head of Membership, to uh, talk about uh, what we've experienced in the first month, one month already, uh, since the Brexit deal came in. Um, uh, and obviously, at, at, at the Chamber, Lewis, one of the big things we've got is... Um, it is a fair proportion of our members that deal internationally, not everybody, of course. We've got about two and a half thousand members in that that, that, that trade internationally. Uh, however, we also deal with an awful lot of non-member businesses as well that, for example, use our export documentation service. So we've got a, a lot of traffic, as it were, really, and, and a lot of contact with an awful lot of businesses. You're on the front line, uh, again, with this in, in the membership team. So how, how has the first few weeks of the new Brexit deal been uh, for you guys uh, dealing with uh, with customers? Uh, firstly, thanks thanks for having us on again, Chris. It's always good to uh, to have the opportunity to jump on, and it was great to hear Di talk us through um, some of the changes that we've made at the Chamber um, in what's been a, a really strange 12 months. Um, so, yeah, you, you're very right. Obviously, we, we've got about two and a half thousand or just over two and a half thousand uh, members who trade internationally that are in, within our membership. Um, but you've, you've hit the nail on the head, really. There's a large number of extra work we do with the business world, the business community, not just in Greater Manchester, but further afield as well, uh, as well particularly with the export documentation. Um, I have to say, we're very, very fortunate here at Greater Manchester Chamber because we, we already had a very strong offering to support businesses, um, both through their international trade journey, but also through the export documentation that accompanies that. I suppose that it's a little bit the less glamorous side, but it's a really important part of the whole process because, you know, it helps uh, goods get from A to B. Um, the, the great work from our team was uh, recognised very recently, actually. In 2019, uh, they received the Excellence in International Trade Services Award, which was presented at the British Chambers of Commerce Awards. Um, so we we're very fortunate to be starting from an extremely strong point. Um, it doesn't resolve the problems that we've got now because everybody's experiencing problems. But at least we were fortunate enough to be starting with a really, really fantastic team in place. Um, we have understandably seen an increase in inquiries um, as businesses of all sectors really contend with the changes um, that the processes uh, in changes in the processes uh, due to Brexit. Um, but we are committed to helping businesses as best we can. So we're delighted to be able to provide that support, not just to our members, but also the wider business world as they navigate the changes. Okay, I'm assuming obviously that there's it's it's, it's been quite a busy time. Uh, I think it's probably a, an understatement, maybe. But how 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 has the changes in, impacted on the volume of queries being received? Uh, and and obviously we we've, we've got to make sure that we can answer these queries or whatever. So I presume there's been some different processes looked at as well to to make sure we can still give out that information to members. Yeah, yeah. Um, it won't surprise you at all that um, we had a. a we experienced a real initial surge uh, in inquiries um, to our team from the start of January. Um, it wasn't unexpected. Um, so we did mobilize our membership team to provide an increased level of training to everyone within our membership uh, team to ensure that they can deal with the most regularly asked questions. Um, the thinking behind this is it enables our experts in the international trade team to focus on those more complex and technical queries, particularly because um, there are so many different angles that a business can approach a situation from. You know, sometimes the, the queries are very technical relating to specific commodity codes, specific um, types of uh, transporting of goods. It may just be for a temporary period and things like that. And that's where we really need our, our experts to be free and available to be able to help with those queries. 
Um, in terms of how this is working, it's actually working very well at the moment as it ensures that businesses with a query get a nice prompt response. Um, and for the more complex queries, regular updates on progression. And I think, to be honest, for a lot of our members at the moment, at this time, being kept informed so that they can then keep their supply chain or their clients informed is the key to it. You know, everybody understands that all of us are learning about how this affects uh, the business world. And I don't think anybody um, expects um, a, um, you know, for a complex query, the answer to be available, you know, at the drop of a hat. However, they like to know that their, their query is getting looked at, they're being supported, and they're getting updated at every uh, milestone when we learn more about it ourselves. And I think that kind of customer service is what's really helped us during the, uh, the initial stages of, uh, of the new Brexit deal. Okay. And then the examples of the sort of common queries um, that, that, that are being asked. Yeah, um, to be honest, it won't be a surprise to you. I'm probably stating the obvious a little bit here by saying that uh, the main queries are coming from those businesses that have been built on years of trade solely with Europe. That tends to be the sticking point because they've only known the environment as it was before. Um, so for these companies, there's, there's been a huge shift in the complexity of the processes um, around shipping their goods. Uh, prior to the end of the transition period, you're probably looking at shipping products to Europe as being only slightly more complicated than it was to ship a product domestically. Um, so a lot of these businesses are facing confusion over relevant things such as the relevant INCO terms to use um, to ensure that the cost and risk is, is, is associated to the importer or exporter. Uh, correct documentation, um, because a lot of the time that's not been required before and now there's customs declarations to think of and all sorts of documentation to make sure it goes through uh, through customs and of course um, and this is the one that's probably being reported a little bit more in the press is is the increase in, in costs related to taxes and duties they tend to be the main things that are coming up um, we're seeing a large amount of interest in our new chain of customs service unsurprisingly um, which supports businesses in the completion and the processing of their customs declarations and that's because there's a huge um, huge swathes of businesses that didn't need that previously you know they didn't need to worry about these declarations and now they do so the main inquiries that we're receiving at the moment and the main frequently asked questions tend to be around process um, and that's because we're all learning to deal with a new way of doing things um, and it could be that a business is struggling to find that information themselves, or it could just be that they want a second opinion. Um, you know, it's there's a lot of, of money behind a lot of these um, these goods that are being shifted, um, the transactions that are happening. The last thing you want to do is, is send something out when you're not sure you're ad adhering to the right processes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time it's coming to us just for a second opinion or for us to provide our insight on, on the best route forward. Yeah, and I think I think that's that's an important one because the the, the problems, and I know we, we we got involved in one yesterday afternoon, didn't we? Whereby it was already goods that was already in in transit, uh, and some paperwork had gone missing, and one thing and another uh, that, that that we got involved with. Obviously, when it's a situation like that, and again, you know, it's it's a well worn phrase, isn't it? But I'll use it again. Time is money, <laughs> uh, and we're talking, you know, not just a few hundred pounds of goods or whatever. We're talking potentially tens of thousands of pounds worth of goods out there, whatever it is. So that it's so crucial, isn't it, that businesses can get a quick response on these. What sort of turnaround time are you, are you aspiring to on these uh, queries? Because I would imagine it's probably not as easy as, you know, a well-worn system that you know and you can just, you know, give an answer off the top of your head. Yeah. This is brand new to everybody, isn't it, to a certain level? What, what what sort of time scale are you, are you are you looking at for for getting back to uh, to 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 businesses with queries? Yeah, well, to, it's very interesting because as you say, as we build our knowledge and we realise what are the uh, more the, the more frequently asked questions or the common queries, um, then obviously we the bank of um, responses that even our membership team have to be able to just go straight back to people is building and building. So we are getting faster over time, but we do understand how important it is for both our, our members and the general business world, as you've alluded to there really, to be supported at this current time, to keep things moving. Um, so due to this, with the dedicated team that we have now, picking up inquiries both by email and phone um, at the first a point of that inquiry, they will give an initial response to these inquiry, usually same day. Um, so that, that works quite well with those that are commonly found queries, queries that our resources can answer, because we will dig through our resources for you and find those, those answers. Then we can get back nice and quickly. If not, 
then you'll always find that we're getting back to customer same day to explain the next steps for those more complicated questions. Um, the benefit of this situation is, we're, as I mentioned before, we're constantly developing our knowledge surrounding the main pressure points that are being experienced by the members and the wider business uh, business world, um, which in turn increases our speed at responding to those most commonly asked questions. I would say already, even a month in, our response rate to those questions that are probably appearing daily or, or more often is much quicker because we've got we, we've already answered it. We've built our knowledge up and we're able to go back to them. For those more complex, it's harder to put a time frame on because it really depends on the complexity of the issue, the amount of markets of products passing through, where it's going in the world um, and where we can help. But we're very fortunate to have a fantastic team and a range of partners that we can lean on to help with that. Yeah, and the other thing is, I've noticed as well that these queries are not just coming in from, um, you know, smaller businesses or businesses that may just be a few people working in them that may not have that breadth of expertise. We've had some quite large, larger businesses contacting us as well, just asking for that that reassurance. I think in 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 some respects, isn't it? It's right across every sector, right across every size of business you can think of. You know, it is. It's not just brand new for a few people. It's brand new right across the piece. I've, I've just asked uh, in, in the chat box if anyone's got any sort of barriers or anything that they're being faced with new rules and whatever, just, just to, to uh, let us know. Uh, um, but um, we, we've got a final um, sort of point, really, just uh, outside of the general queries. And it's a great point you've made there about that um, coming together and, and, and that wider knowledge being developed through each query that you get. What other support, though, can the Chamber offer people uh, in uh, with, with international trade? Um, yeah, it's very, it's very interesting that you mention that as well, because um, just touching on your point before, it's it's we've got members with queries, we've got non-members with queries, we've got local businesses, national businesses and international businesses coming to us because obviously they need help with their goods coming inwards as well. Really, really interesting. And it's all vital that we provide as much support as we can because it keeps things moving and it's really important at the moment. Um, outside of the direct support for the individual queries that we get, uh, we've done a lot of work around firstly develop, developing our online resources for our members. Um, so we have our own GMCC Brexit Hub, uh, which can be accessed at gmccbrexithub.com, uh, which provides a huge amount of information to support businesses. Uh, we also have a new Brexit section on our gmchamber.co.uk website as well, um, which, uh, which your team, Chris, um, keep nice and up to date and, and, and add extra information to. Um, when we're also fortunate, as I touched upon before, to have an array of partners and international consultants that help us. And I think some of them are on uh, the call today. I think the VAT IT who help us with our VAT issues uh, are on this call. Um, but these partners and international consultants enable us to support on all elements of the international trade journey that a business will undertake. And that's very important because although we've got great expertise in our teams, they are experts on international trade or on export documentation and the customs declarations that surround it. Sometimes you need to drill, that, drill down into further expertise. And the fact that we've got this network of consultants and partners, this ensures that even in the rare event that we can't help with a query or a specific service um, that, that is required, uh, that we can connect you with somebody who can. And we're always looking to grow, nurture and develop that, um, that range of partners, and the consultants that we have globally is something that the international team have prided themselves on for years now. Before the Brexit vote, they were already creating this network that's fantastic. And it, it helps across the board. It's not just at moments of concern and crisis like now. It also helps when you're looking to uh, consider a market for future. You know, you might be looking to grow a business development. Um, the, the services and structures we're putting in place now are not just to deal with the changes caused by Brexit. They're also to deal with the future and to make sure that our members and the business community can be as prosperous as possible uh, in working with new markets in the future as well. I think that's so important because while we're in this sort of sticky position of presence, you know, I think and it, it will get better. Um, I think it's I think it's safe to say once people you know understand the new process and everything, um, I, I'll, I'll probably dare say it will probably never be as easy as it was. Uh, quite simply because there's always going to be something in the way, no matter how much you shrink it now, there will have to be some uh, some extra stuff in the way, but things will get better. And I think it's important, you've made a very important point there because uh, going back to your, your original comment, Louis, obviously this is really impacting all those businesses that just traded with EU, with, with, with EU countries. If you were trading tra to America or wherever it was outside the EU, um, situation normal to 
<laughs> to a certain extent. Obviously, the real big stuff, some minor changes here and there, but the real big stuff is on those EU uh, uh, examples, I think, and that, that's quite important. Uh, so th thanks very much for that, Lewis. Uh, there's been um, a couple of comments made in the chat box have also uh, got the um, uh, got the web address there for our Brexit hub as well. Uh, Graham, uh, Graham Williams has said he's, he's certainly troublesome dealing with our sister business in the Republic of Ireland and expensive and extended lead times. Graham, I don't know if you want to just add a, add a little bit more to that uh, because I think that Irish border question is the one that probably causes most people to scratch their heads and wonder what on earth's going on. Uh, and I noticed this morning that there's some uh, disputes over in Northern Ireland where they've uh, had some security issues at the, the point of entry or whatever. I, I don't know if you want to share uh, any of that with us, Graham. if you want to un unmute your mic. No, that's okay. That's fine. No, no problem. Uh, I'll do it. I'll do it in the chat box. Oh, there you go. All right. Thanks. All thanks, right. Greg. Thanks for you that. Can. No, no, no problem. Uh, uh, another comment as well we've had as well is that somebody, you know, we, going back from our previous chat with that, people are, are working remotely now. You know, it may well be that you know you may be uh, responsible of working in your company's. Uh, sort of export team and you may be working remotely and I can imagine you're feeling quite lonely and isolated at present with all these new rules completely throwing everything up in the air from the processes you're normally used to dealing with uh, I can imagine it you may may feeling quite lonely at present uh, as though the whole world's against you but uh, again it's, it's those type of people uh, hopefully we can help with, uh, with with some of our services uh, in the future so if anybody has got any further comments on that please put them in in the box now if not and you want to follow it up please email me uh, at any time I'm on the lookout uh, for stories whereby people uh, are having issues. It's not a, a morning groans time or anything like that. You may want to use it as a piece of therapy. I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure, really. But uh, anyway, it just might be a case of just collecting that information because, again, I'm still, um, you know, I still don't think some of this stuff is, is, is getting the light of day or the attention it needs in the media, really, to be quite honest. Uh, it just seems to be some of the more personal stuff where, you know, if you bought £200 worth of goods from a company in, uh, in in France, you've now got to pay the VAT and the export duty and all this, that, and the other coming in. Businesses have got to face that day in, day out, as well as a whole host of other new things that we've got to deal with. And what I want to do and what the Chamber wants to do is just shine a light a little bit on, on some of that. Um, so, uh, again, you know, uh, Graham's just added on the... the um, the, uh, the 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 resourcing at ports as well. We've also heard issues whereby with imports themselves, uh, individual um, uh, documents or whatever being interpreted in different ways, uh, not just at different ports, but sometimes in the same ports as well. Um, I'm speaking to a, a business uh, later on today as well that's having some real problems with uh, with goods stuck in Spain. Uh, we've heard stories whereby. Um, uh, a guy had a, a container full of fish that was left rotting on the port on the harbour side, quite simply because he put the wrong code uh, in in the documents. He'd never had to fill codes out beforehand. Put the wrong code in, and the code he put in was for a protected species. So a container full of fish under that heading is not going anywhere soon. So the whole lot, obviously, it's fish. Soon goes off. Um, they've had to to wave that one goodbye. Simple stuff like that. Now that's that's you know. A simple error, but it does have big, big implications. So this is something we're going to come back to, obviously, over the next few weeks. Uh, Lewis, thank you very much uh, for that insight. And uh, thanks as well to your team. Um, and also thanks to our trade team as well for, uh, for the work they are doing on this. There's so much... Uh, information flying around at present. Part of the job is to make sure we've got the right information presented in the right way, uh, which is part of it as well. But again, if anybody's got any queries, anything like that, anything, any problems to do with stuff you're facing around Brexit, you might not be exporting, you might be sat waiting a goods coming in from Europe or whatever it may well be, uh, please get in touch uh, with us and see if we can help out with that. Uh, so just coming up to the uh, the end of this morning's uh, event, thanks very much for, for all your involvement and chat and, and discussions and whatever. I thought we've covered quite a, a wide range of, of topics, really. And like I said, we've uh, we've done what we set out to achieve with this, really, give you an insight into some of the stuff, some of the workings that's going on within the Chamber, but also not losing sight of what we're here 
here to do, and that's to help our members, help business in Greater Manchester. And now more than ever, uh, they need that help and support, and it's not something that will just finish when lockdown finishes. This is in for the long term, I think, and we'll be here for the long term as well to help and support them. Just a couple of uh, sort of parish notices this time next week. Uh, on the 9th of February, we've got our GMCC networking event, mentioned by Di and others as well. Uh, and I think we've had a couple of comments as well in, in the chat box as well. People really do appreciate the opportunity to network. It may be virtual. It's not quite the same as going, uh, having a, a quick natter over a sandwich or a biscuit uh, in a hotel room somewhere or in our chamber space uh, um, event rooms. Uh, but it's just as good. You're making those connections and we will get back to that physical event sometime in the not too distant future. A quick mention as well about the Disruptors event on the 18th of February. We're totally hearing a lot about disruption, different ways of doing things. Uh, that's an event specifically aimed at that. If you want more information on NDA, look out for the events brief dropping into your inbox later on this afternoon. And like I said, if you've got any issues, evidence on things that are affecting your business, whether they're related to Brexit, COVID, anything like that, I'd love to hear from somebody that's applied for and got some local grant money from a local authority. We're hearing a lot about that at the present moment in time where there seems to be a lot of money sat within our local authorities not getting out to businesses. When you ask them, it's about businesses not applying. And when you ask businesses, it's about them not giving the money. Something's not right with that system. So we need to look into that and find out what the problem is. So if you want to if you want to uh, let us know some of those examples, uh, please feel free to email me after this. Uh, as ever, follow us on Twitter at GM Chamber. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.